Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys we're going to be doing a deck profile of a deck that's just near and dear to my heart in some ways, and that is Kunamali. Now the reason I say it's near and dear to my heart is because, as you guys know, I love ancient history, I love studying about ancient cultures, etc., and Kunamali is kind of the embodiment of that to some degree, um, even though it is based off ancient uh, mythology to some degree and things of that nature. He does have that element of history. So that's why I've always loved this deck for that reason. Ever since I saw it on the original show, I said, I gotta build this deck. Found out very quickly it was not a great deck. But then we got Kunamali Never Disc, and I finally built the deck. And I've been playing it off and on for ever since. Um, it's gone through a bunch of different incarnations over the years. But uh, with the new support that we recently got, uh, the recent set, I think the deck is actually really good now. Uh, and definitely is a fun deck to play at Locals. So without further ado, let us get started. So first we got our three Kunamali Nebrodisk, a.k.a. the Smiling uh, Lima Bean. Yes, that's why I've been told this card is a Smiling Lima Bean or a Smiling Pea. Uh, I don't know. You tell me. Does it look like a smiley face to you? Now you can never unsee it. I'm just saying. But, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, Never Disc is kind of like your Stratus of the deck. Back when this card came out, this was the heart and soul of the deck. We used to run uh, pretty much Artifact Kunomalies, which you still can run in 2021, you know, uh, 2022. Uh, but I wanted to take the deck in a new direction using more of the Kunomaly support. Uh, the, you still can run Scythe, you can still run more tech and things of that nature if you want to build more of a controlled version of Kunomalies where you're focusing more on a control element of stunning your opponent and running a bunch of some a lot more traps, maybe some more hand traps even more than I am, etc. So that's up to you to decide, but three Nebro Disc is pretty staple. Um, next we run three Kunomaly Magnum Globe. Uh, this card is kind of interesting. Uh, if you guys don't know what this card is, I'm going to read it to you in a second. But I have to admit, this artwork is really interesting. And it does not look like the globe of the world. So I don't know what it is. Maybe it's Pangea. See, I'm, I'm giving these historical references of, as I'm doing this video here for you guys. But what does this card do? You can tribute this card to summon one Kunamali monster from your deck except Kunamali go, uh, Globe. If this card is in your graveyard except the turn it was sent there, you can banish one Kunamali card from your graveyard except Kunamali globe add this card to your hand you can always search the effect of quinamali globe once per turn so pretty much this is kind of to explain to you why this card's so good is it's pretty much a lone fire for quinamalies in some respects i know it's not a plant i know it's not that but it's kind of like that it's another good engine starter for your deck and that is something this deck has needed for a long time because there are some bigger Kunamalies that you couldn't get out. You couldn't get some plays going and you need to get your level 5 Kunamalies out so you can do these plays. And you need to get those Kunamalies out to make them go to these plays. So it's been a struggle, but uh, now we are perfectly fine, I feel like. <laughs> Next we have Kunamali uh, Tusk Rocket. Uh, he's another three of. This guy came out not recently, but about a year ago, I think it was. Um, that made me excited. I think this looks like a Crayola crown. Like, I've seen, like, the art artifact, like, online of this card. But this makes it look like a crown, not a rocket. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, three uh, of the rocket, pretty staple. We also run three Chronomaly Moy, which is based off the Easter Island uh, statues. Uh, this card has always been at different ratios until recently, now with the new cards. So now it's definitely a staple 3 of, in my opinion. Before, I would run it as a 2 of, uh, because we run Golden Jet, and there were some Cyber Dragon plays I used to do back in the day. No more, uh, but we do still run Kunamali Golem. So, uh, excuse me, uh, aka Moy. So, that's uh, the main Kunamalis, and some people do not run these other ones still. Maybe because they didn't like Indiana Jones, uh, the last Indiana Jones movie. I don't know. But uh, three, <laughs> Kunamali Crystal Skull. Yes, I'm just dropping the puns and references in this video. I've uh, been saving these for over a year. Uh, so, sorry, we run uh, three Crystal Skull, which is a searcher, and Kunamali Crystal Bones, which is kind of like a way to help go on some rank three plays. 
Granted, I understand people saying, oh, I don't want to run these cards because dot 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 uh, they are not good or dot 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 this doesn't really help me out or dot 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 these cards I already have enough searchers with without skull or I don't need to go into the rank three plays. I get where you're coming from. I really truly do. But these this play there's some cool little plays you can do with these cards right here. Plus you're adding consistency with Crystal Skull. So. I, I, I get it, but I also say run it because uh, I see a lot of people just sometimes running the Crystal Skull and not even the Bones. I understand why, but the two really go well together to actually do some cool little plays. So if you want to run it your way, go right ahead. But from playtesting, I've liked it this way, and it's worked out pretty well for me because Crystal Skulls, you just, just discard it and get out of Quinali Monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So... Like, I've seen people run one Crystal Skull, and I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> Next up, we run uh, two Kunamali. Uh, I cannot pronounce this card name, but Figures, we'll just call it. This card is a great searchable card to give you protection for your Kunamali monsters. I've seen people run this as a one or two of. That's up to you to decide. But it's a great card to give protection to your monsters, because this card, uh, I'll read to you pretty much the reason we run it. If a Chronomaly monster you control will be destroyed by battle or opponent's card effect, you can discard this card instead. So the other effect is nice, but that's the main reason I like this. It's built-in protection. You can just go discard, protect my Chronomaly monster, there you go. And in certain situations, that can be really uh, key, especially maybe you didn't get a great hand. You can set up for plays next turn. Uh, next, I run one Kunamli Gordian Knot. Yes, it was not cut by Alexander the Great uh, to prophesize him being a great ruler. Um, <laughs> see, I'm just giving you the references and everything with these in this video. So you're learning history and Yu-Gi-Oh at the same time. Um, <laughs> you weren't expecting that, were you? But Gordian Knot's really good. If your hand bricks, Gordian Knot is a great way to get out, uh, get play set up. I like it as a one-of. I used to run this as a two-of back in the day, but a one-of is all you need now. So that's all for the Chronoblades. Uh Like I said, you can run, if you want to cut cards and run, you know, different tech engines in the deck, go right ahead. Next, I run three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. I want my hand traps. I want to be able to say no to you with... Uh, my ash blossoms so it's generic you can run whatever hand traps you want i've said that a thousand times you can run your drilling locks your ghost ogres your this your nobleman of cross outs whatever run what you want but i just like my three ash blossoms next i run kunamali temple of Trin trinathon uh, this card's a staple three of in the deck hands down i hope one day this gets a super reprint it'd be so nice but i doubt it ever 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 will happen um, because I just think it looks cool with the night sky and just this, the old uh, you know architecture just just the history guy in me right um, but yes this cards really good gives you different things you can do in your deck uh, pretty much this if you guys don't know what this card does I'll read it because it's so new if you control no monsters all monsters you control are Queen Island monsters you can pay 500 life points Immediately after this card effect resolves, normal summon one Kronomaly monster from your hand. If a Kronomaly or number XYZ monster you control would activate an effect by detaching material, you can send this card to the graveyard instead of one of those materials. You can only use the effect of Kronomaly Temple once per turn. So this card is really good. It's kind of like Secrets of Valhalla. Uh, where for eight for a fairies where you could special summon out, but it also has the benefit that hey, if you detach a number monster or a uh, Kronomaly monster's effect. Uh, no, you can send this to Graveyard instead. So, nice card. Uh, two, uh, Kronomaly City Babylon. Some people run one Babylon, some people run two. I find that it's easily searchable, so I do not run terraforming. But um, I will say that it's very good to get this card set up onto the field as soon as possible for its versatile usage it can have later in the duel. But two, Kronomaly City Babylon. One, Kronomaly... Uh, Pyramid Eye Tablet. You don't have to run this, but there are instances when I am trying to push for d damage, uh, or maybe my hand wasn't as good, um, where Kronomaly Eye Tablet with that 800 attack bonus for all Kronomaly monsters does come into play. And I'm just saying that, because I'm running it as a one-of. I know some people are like, oh, it's just 800 attack. 
800 attack can be a lot in some instances. I'm just saying. It could mean the difference of three monsters, two monsters doing just that much more damage to win you the game right then and there. Granted, I know Kunabali is an OTK deck. I got that. But what I'm trying to say is this card has come in handy more than I thought it was going to, even with the new support. So try it out as a one of. It's not going to hurt you, I find. Uh, we run two Ready Fusion and one Instant Fusion. Uh, you could run triple. I've seen people run triple Ready Fusion, and I'm like, hey, go right ahead. Be my guest if that's what you want to do. But I found my instances where I'm getting multiple hands of Ready Fusion, and I'm just like, ah, uh, this is a good card, but I don't need a trip, double of these in my opening hand. So that's why I decided to run as a two of, along with the one Instant Fusion. Um, so what does this card do? This is going to help you bring out the best fusions of all time, you know, Musician King, because he's going to rock your world. <laughs> rock archetype jokes. And then Guiltia, the D Knight, because you're going to give your opponent the D, because you're the Knight. Um, horrible dad jokes, I, I know, I know. Um, but yes, these cards are going to help set up for your level 5 um, exceed plays, which is really good. We also run Kabanara Warrior as well for instant fusion. But uh, yeah, these cards are staple. I really like them in this deck. I'm happy that these came out pretty much right before Kunamli stuff did because they really help facilitate the deck in some of its basic combo plays. So two Ready Fusion is really nice in this deck. Uh, we also are running some uh, meta cards as well. I'm running Double uh, Tactic Talents. You don't have to run this. Like I said, if you want to cut cards in your deck for certain things, go right ahead. But a lot of times, certain cards like my Globe, my Nebber Disc, and other cards in my deck, people are going to hand trap those. And if they do, I have triple trap to talents, and I can just be like, Pah, there you go, let me go off and draw some more cards and get more combo plays going. So, just saying, you can run this, you can run whatever. Uh, these two card slots are open to whatever you want to run. I like to tactic talents right now because I own them, and I've been finding them very useful because a lot of people in my area run a lot of hand traps and they love just throwing their hand traps down um, a lot of the time. So trip attractive talents really gets off a lot in plays. So you can run whatever you want to though. Uh, next uh, we're running some one-ups. We're running one upstart goblin. One call by the grave for protection against hand traps and graveyard oriented decks it's very helpful against. And one Monster Reborn. 39 card deck. You don't care about giving your opponents life points. I know you're an OTK based deck, but like legitly, it doesn't matter. You're just drawing cards. Um, if you're setting up for the OTK, then just don't upstart Goblin that turn. Like, come on. Basic. Use your brain. Uh, Monster Reborn. We are combo oriented deck. Monster Reborn is going to bring cards back that we have in Grave for resources. Uh, then lastly, we run Kunamali Esp Espaza. Uh, glyph. I, I, I can't pronounce this card properly. Espaza, Espaza Glyph? Somebody help me pronounce that. But what does this card do and why are we running it as a 3 of as a trap? Let's read it. During the main phase, target one XYZ monster you control or in your graveyard. Special summon two Chronomaly monsters that are one level higher than that monster. Monsters rank from your hand, deck, and or graveyard. But negate their effects. Then immediately after this card resolves, XYZ summon one Kunamali XYZ monster using only those two monsters. You can only activate this card once per turn. I think me reading that card effect, if you know Kunamalis, you know the different levels that we were going over early on. Fives, fours, you know, we even got a three over here. Like, we got a couple threes over here, right? You see where this is going. Because when we get into the extra deck, you'll understand why. So let's get into the extra deck. We run two, uh, number 33, Kunamali Machu Mech. I have an ultimate rare first ed one. Why? Because I love this deck this much. I picked this up when this deck came out. <laughs> so I run two Kunamali Machu Mech, one ultimate rare first ed one. I love this baby. Um, this is gonna. This was the OTK maker, the cheese, so to speak, back in the day. The old kids call it. Uh, Kunamali, uh, Vinleman, we run two of, I've seen people run three of this, I don't get why you run three, but hey, if you want to run three, go run three. And then number 36, Kunamali, Chaka Halua, Halua, um, and that is your Kunamali XZ monsters. Some people run the space one, the level three, hey, run that if you want to, but these are the main ones you're going to be running here. 
for uh, some level, we also run uh, Constellar Pleiades. Pleiades is still good in, in this day and age. Uh, one Tornado Dragon, in case of back row dot deck, you just go Tornado Dragon. Uh, Gorgon, uh, Gorgonic Guardian. Uh, Gorgonic Guardian, do not underestimate how powerful this card can be in certain, against certain decks and certain matchups. This card is still good. Um, Constellar Pleiades, uh, Hadris, I run this as a one of. Uh, this card's neat to run. Uh, yes, you can turn all your opponent's monsters from attack position to defense position. It's non-targeting. Uh, that's neat. But it's also to help you go for Constellar Pleiades. Uh, some people in this instance do not like running these cards, and they run cards such as Vorkasaurus and Gaia Charger. You can run that instead if you wish, but I wanted another level 3 play I could run besides Gorgonic Guardian. Um, and, you know, you could run your generic level 3s, but they're not going to really, like, Dante is not going to do a lot in this deck. Uh, Phantom Knight Breaksword is not going to do a lot in this deck. But this card's really neat because it requires two light monsters. Well, Crystal Skull and Crystal Bones are light attribute. So you can just, okay, put everything to defense position and go into Constellar Pleiades. Uh, level 7, M7. So you can try it out if you want to. You don't have to. It's just a little thing I run. Uh, I also won one Divine Arsenal AA Zeus. Yes, I own the card. Yes, I'm going to run it because I own the card. And then for your most powerful monsters of the deck, that's a, that's a, a joke. Uh, Carbonara Warrior, uh, Guilty of the D-Knight, and Rock On Musician King. Um, so yeah, best card ever in Yu-Gi-Oh! Magician King. Bow! So yeah, that was a guitar a noise. You weren't expecting that. Uh, but yeah, that's the extra deck, guys. I apologize. I went off on different tangents. It's early morning. I'm energetic. I want to... I'm really happy Like to profile this deck finally. I've been waiting for this support to come out for a while. So, I hope you guys all enjoy this video. Like I said, this deck is super fun for me. I've always enjoyed playing it. And it's just a fun deck that... It's very unique in what it can do. Because it can do OTK stuff. And it has the ability to go into these different rank up monsters to some degree. Uh, if you want to go down the rank up ladder. But mainly we're focusing on this right now. This, this deck and this OTK mechanic that it can do as well as just being a generic exceed dot deck, which is really awesome. Hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a thumbs up down below and to subscribe to the channel for more awesome videos. And until next time, guys, take care, have fun dueling, good luck dueling. Hope you guys all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all next time. Good luck dueling to all of you.